All right, so synthetic division starting to make sense. But if you're anything like the people in the comments, you might be wondering if synthetic division works on a divisor like this one, where the leading coefficient is not equal to one. As it turns out, using synthetic division normally will result in an incorrect quotient. So in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly what you need to do to avoid that mistake. But first, do me a favor and synthetically divide that like button if you are loving not using polynomial long division to solve problems like this one. All right, so we're gonna start this synthetic division problem just like any other one. And that is gonna be by drawing one of these L bracket chart thingies. And you'll remember that our goal with synthetic division is to fill in this chart with a couple pieces of key information. And so the fact that that coefficient on our divisor is not equal to one here is gonna change the way we approach our table just slightly. But let's start the same way by finding the first piece of information that we need for our table. And that is gonna be by taking our divisor of two X plus one and setting it equal to zero and finding the value of X that makes the divisor equal to zero. And I'm just gonna apply some simple algebra here to bring the one over to the other side, divide both sides by two to get X is equal to negative one half. All right, so that is going to be the first key piece of information that I need for my table. And I'm gonna place that X value right here on the outside of my bracket. Now, normally what we would do with synthetic division is we would take the coefficients on the dividend, the eight, the four, the negative three, and that eight at the end, and stick them in the top row of our table. But because we are dealing with a divisor that has a leading coefficient that is not one, we're gonna make a slight alteration to our coefficients. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna divide each of our coefficients by that leading coefficient, which is two, okay? So I'm gonna go through here and I'm just gonna divide each of those coefficients by two. And I'm gonna place the results in the first row of my table, right? So eight divided by two is four. 4 divided by 2 is going to be 2. Negative 3 over 2, that's going to be a fraction. And I'm going to challenge you to stick with fractions here. You will come across fractions when you solve synthetic division problems like this. So I'm going to keep that as negative 3 over 2. And 8 divided by 2, that's going to be 4. All right, so that's going to be the top row of our synthetic division table. So that's going to be the first major difference in our synthetic division process here as a result of that leading coefficient that isn't 1. Now, the rest of the process is going to look very similar to what we're used to seeing with synthetic division. We're going to start by taking that first value and just bringing it down and placing it below our table. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to take that 4 and just place it right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to multiply that value of 4 by this value on the outside of our bracket that we got when we set our divisor equal to 0. And we're going to place that result right here underneath our second value. The next thing we do when we're using synthetic division is we add straight down our columns. So we're gonna take that two and we're gonna add negative two and place the result directly below. So in this case, I'm gonna get a zero. And with that step, we've completed most of what we have to do with synthetic division. The rest of it's just gonna be repeating that process until we get to the end of our top row. So we're gonna take that zero, we're gonna multiply by negative a half, and we're gonna place the result right here. So zero times anything is gonna be zero, and we're gonna add straight down here. And while we are working with a fraction, we're just adding zero. So we're actually just gonna end up with negative three over two. So I'll place that down here below our table. Now this next step might be intimidating if you're not super comfortable with fractions, but what I'm gonna do is just write it off to the side here, just for anyone who's a little bit more visual. What I'm doing, remember, is just taking this negative three over two and I'm multiplying it by that negative a half. So let me write that out off to the side here. And remember, when you multiply fractions, you just multiply numerator by numerator, denominator by denominator. So in this case, we're gonna end up with three over four. And that three over four, that's what we got when we multiplied negative three over two by negative a half. So that three over four is just gonna go right here underneath our last value in our table. Speaking of scary fractions, the last thing we need to do is add straight down our column. So here we're gonna end up with four plus three over four. So I'll write that out again here. Now four plus three over four, that's gonna require me to find a common denominator here. I'm gonna write four as 16 over four so that I have a common denominator of four. And at this point I have a nice simple addition of fractions problem here. I've got 16 over four plus three over four. That's just gonna be 19 over four. Not the nicest looking fraction, but it's nothing that we can't handle. So I'll write that right here as the last value in our synthetic division table. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm just gonna clean up my workspace a little bit here because this is where things are gonna start looking a little bit different from what we're used to seeing with synthetic division. So normally when we use synthetic division, the numbers that we get end up forming the coefficients of our quotient, right? So I'm just gonna bring those down and write them right here for us. And I'm gonna come back to that scary 19 over four in, in just a minute, cause that's important here. And so since I was working with a cubic dividend here and I was dividing by a divisor with a degree one, I know that the first term of my quotient will have a degree that is one less than that of the dividend. So one less than three would be two. So the first term in my quotient is gonna have an X squared term. 
All right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start just kind of developing the rest of my quotient by reducing my power by one each time. And so in this case, this zero makes this term not really relevant. But just for the sake of explanation, I'm going to show you that this would actually be x to the power of one. And this last term would be x to the power of zero. Right? I'm going to decrease my exponent by one each time as I move from left to right. But I'm not actually going to write it like this because I want to keep things clean. So you can see that I end up with this expression as my quotient. And normally when we perform synthetic division, we look to this value right here to find our remainder. And as it turns out, we're still going to take a look at this value, but we're not going to use that exact value as our remainder. There's one extra step we have to take here in order to make sure that everything works out. And so that extra step is that we're going to take that value of 19 over 4 and we're going to multiply it by the leading coefficient of our divisor, which in this case, you'll remember was two. So I'm gonna take that 19 over four, I'm gonna multiply by two, and when I do that, I'm gonna end up with a new value of 19 over two. Okay, you can picture just sort of multiplying straight across here and simplifying that fraction. I'm gonna get 19 over two. And that, as it turns out, is going to be our remainder. And so the last thing I wanna do here is just sort of summarize all of this as a statement. So when we divide our cubic dividend by this divisor, we're gonna end up with this quotient with this remainder. And one of the ways I like to express this is just by writing an equivalent statement for our dividend. And so I've just done that for you here to save you some time. So what this says is that if I take that divisor and I multiply it by my quotient and add that remainder in, when I simplify things, I should get my original dividend back again. And so I've just expanded and collected like terms and simplified here just to show you that we do in fact get our original dividend back again when we clean up this expression. So this process is really similar to what you've seen with regular synthetic division, but you are gonna wanna practice it, which is why you're gonna wanna head over to this video next, and I will see you there.